outstrip in KwaZulu-Natal uh, was one of the big issues uh, during the period that you reported in. Uh, we also know that some of the mills were closed down. Give us your outlook uh, for South Africa at this point in time and given the fact that production wasn't as robust due to, uh, uh, to, due to the drought that we saw. Look, I think one must make a distinction between sort of the immediate prospects and the, the medium-term prospects. Uh, we tend to run more marathons than sprints. If one talks about the medium-term prospects, we've got no doubt that in South Africa you'll start seeing sugar mills, and next to every sugar mill there will be a power plant to provide electricity. On our sugar mills in South Africa, we should be able to provide some 189 megawatts. So There's quite a substantial amount of that, which means then you actually increase the revenue stream to both that mill and its supplying growers, which makes things attractive going forward. It's one of the reasons why in this period alone we are planting another 6,000 hectares under cane in South Africa. In the short term, obviously, we've had the drought. I mean, some areas they had the worst rainfall since 1915, and we've seen a severe drop-off in uh, yields, and as a result of that, came to the mills, and that clearly impacted on our unit cost. So we've had quite a tough year in South Africa. Mm. Oh, well, just looking at uh, the crops that we did see from South Africa, 100,000 tons below the 564,000 tons produced in 2009 and 2010 uh, year as well. Just looking at, at those numbers going forward, and you're obviously going to be focusing on electricity generation, co-generation as well, which is obviously going to, as you said, assist you in uh, you know, becoming more optimistic when it comes to the South African operations. Looking forward, what are your targets when it comes to crops? Look, essentially, one of the biggest issues, the way we can bring our cost down um, is to increase our volume that we produce out of already installed sugar mill. If you take 09, 010 as a base, um, uh, we still had a gap of uh, a million tons of sugar production in our stored milling capacity. Today, if you had to rebuild that, it will cost you more than 10 billion rand to build that um, uh, capacity. And you've got the ability to increase your revenue stream by at least 3 billion rand when you fill that um, milling capacity up. So a, bit, a lot of our, conf, conf, con, our concentration at the moment is on getting more cane to our mills in Zimbabwe, in Mozambique and South Africa. Mm. Let's touch on the Zimbabwean operations at this point. Profits at 303 million rand uh, in the first half of the financial year compared to the 326 million rand in the same period last year. Sale volumes up 3%. We know that you've also been rehabilitating some of your mills uh, there. Uh, going forward, uh, you have uh, quite strict targets in place. Do you think that they can be met in the next financial year? Absolutely. Um, uh, you know, we, we're well on our way to improve our yields there, and we're well on our way to have more hectares harvesters that will supply our mills. Mm. Touching on uh, Mozambique, um, much higher profits uh, coming to the fore, but we have seen the metallical pr prices uh, coming down quite significantly, purely because we saw local sugar prices uh, not really increasing in tandem with global prices. When do you see that gap closing? Look, it'll take a bit of time. What has happened that in, you know, from last year, the medical actually weakened by 27% compared to the rand. And obviously, as a producer, you've got to have some sensitivity towards the pressure on food price in Mozambique. You might have seen some of those riots in Maputo and the pressure in the country. I mean, but at the end of the day, you cannot sell a, a product in a country like Mozambique uh, that is selling at the price um, uh, where you need a 50% increase for it to be equal to the regional prices. Because one of your dangers then is that sugar just leaks into neighboring countries. So we've got no doubt that we will see some increases in the sugar price in Mozambique. Mm. Looking at your starch operations here in South Africa, uh, a favorable uh, agricultural conditions, a great crop uh, coming to the fore this year. We've also heard that because of the surplus crop that it's putting a lot of pressure on the farmers and of course on prices as well. Where do you see that going from here onwards? And, and just give us an indication of, of your view on the supply de demand scenario and how that is affecting prices. Look, I think essentially, obviously, the, the maize farmers are um, uh, complaining a little bit, but one has to remember that for many years, the world um, maize price was about $80 a ton. It's now well over $200 a ton. Uh, so uh, at, at these sort of prices, um, um, South Africa should be a net exporter of maize. Mm. Uh, looking at your uh, land development as well, we know that we've seen a bit of pressure coming to the fore, um, to the, uh, the first uh, half of the year, of course. When do you see a recovery coming, uh, uh, coming forward? And of course, could you also give us an update on your joint venture uh, with uh, Zimbali Lakes? Look, generally, it, it is, it, it's a long-term process, this conversion out of agricultural land into property development. I and mean, we've done it over a long period of time. It's an extremely valuable part of our um, um, business. I think in the short term where there's a big opportunity lies in industrial land, um, uh, Interquenny and, and Belita has got a serious shortage of industrial land. 
and we're working very hard to make that available. Mm. Let's touch on, on our global sugar prices. Of course, we saw um, incredible moves coming to the fore. We saw them at around 33 cents, US cents uh, per pound last week. Then we saw it tumbling down to around 26 uh, US cents, and that's where we're sitting at right now. Uh, where do you see sugar prices coming going forward? I think, firstly, we, we tend to sell our sugar relatively over the years, so we're less exposed to a, a big spike. So we don't benefit when it really quickly spikes up. It would be nice to sell all of it right at the top. And neither do we then, um, uh, you know, cry so much when it falls down. Uh, in these particular results on South African exports, for example, there was a 19 cents a pound average. And I'm certainly quite confident that we'll realize more than that in the next season. When you say more than that, what level are you looking at, given the fact that the, the sugar price, as I said, around 26 US cents at this point in time? Look, I'm, I'm never one to predict it. What we do know um, uh, is that worldwide, um, uh, you've got some fundamentals that are seriously on the physical side encouraging a higher price. You see less um, uh, sugar, sugar available in stocks throughout the world. And, and one's got quite a visibility on when new sugar can, or new sugar milling plants are being established. Um, uh, and at the moment, there are not too many being built. Mm. Uh, very quickly, uh, Peter, looking at the amount that you export out of the country, we know due to regulations you've got to keep 79% of the sugar produ produced in the country and you export around 21%. Are you uh, exporting as much sugar as you would like or are you starting to uh, pull that back given the fact that the RAND is not really uh, that attractive right now for investors? Not at all. I mean, any extra ton of sugar we can produce um, uh, will be favourable to us.